very slow, deep, relaxing breaths. And as we breathe, we allow all the tension to drain from our body and mind. We picture ourselves now on top of a beautiful mountain in the center of a circular grove of trees. And in the center of our circle, a bonfire blazes forth, lighting us and the grove up with a sacred golden light. We recognize and dedicate this light as the light of perfect love and perfect trust. And we name this light Awen, Inspiration. And we invite the presence of our father and mother. And we ask that they join together with us now in our consciousness and in this space. And we ask that we be led along the way to be happier, more peaceful, and more loving people. Thank you very much. Together we say, blessed be. Blessed be. <laughs> Good girl. Okay, so um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, I've had some questions asked of me lately about the some of the discussions that I've given in the past about the laws of polarity. So I wanted to go into a little bit of the principles of polarity, the principle of polarity from the hermetic principles. I wanted to just maybe go into a different aspect of, of that. And remember that the law of polarity is, um, is expanded into the law of gender. So they're, they're related laws. And so if we think about the, the god and the goddess, we can recognize that they are um, manifestations or expressions of the law of polarity. If you think about polarity, you can think about a battery. You th- I know, sweetie. I just can't see everybody. A battery has a positive and a negative pole, right? And so if you think about the god as being the plus side and the goddess as being the minus side, when we say positive and negative, in this sense we're talking about um, electrical and magnetic versus positive and negative in, in a moralistic sense. So when you think in terms of magical power, which is one of the m- most important reasons to learn about these principles, is, is for magical effectiveness. The um, anybody that's taken the, the, the Witch's Primer class understands that, that part of what we do is we build our power base. And um, the Witch's Pyramid is part of that. And, and in, the, in the Witch's Primer pod class, um, I've actually even expanded on those lessons. So if that's something you're interested in, you can listen to that. And, but part of the reason why we... Um, we even are interested in, in, in building this power base <clears throat> is to is to make ourselves more accessible to magical power and effectiveness because um, one of the reasons why I got involved in, in the craft especially witchcraft is because I wanted to know how to to do things I wanted to know how to to make changes. I wanted to know how to solve problems. I wanted to know how to heal illnesses. I wanted to know how to make money. I wanted to know how to protect myself. I wanted to know how to, to, to be able to, even before I understood any of Eli's teachings, I understood that there were problems that were given to me and that I needed to solve in order to grow. And that I figured that once I heard Eli's spiel on the fact that the way to perfection is, or the way of initiation is a way to speed up your perfection, well, what that means to me is, and, and it's pretty blatant in his, in his teachings, is that magic is a way that we do this, is that we, we are given problems um, in order that we solve them so that we go on to the next problem, so that we go on to the next problem, so that we go on to the next problem, in order that we can cover a lot more material so it's an accelerated course of growth and that if we are able to to become more easily accessible to the powers of the universe that is uh, uh, available to us at all times that we we are able to focus this power 
into what we call maybe spell work or magical operations, magical technologies in order for us to get results, right? If, it's, if, if we are not getting results with our magic, it's, I don't understand why we would want to do it. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. People that don't, and, and again, I'm not saying that if you're a student of these principles, if you're a student of the craft, if you're a student of, uh, of any of this, or if, or if you're initiated on any level, that your life is supposed to be perfect and that if it's not, you're doing it wrong. But I am saying that when I see people that go through the same shtick over and over and over again, and I know that they know some principles, something in me says, they have a disconnect between theory and practice. There's something in there, and again, it's not that they're bad, but they need to be assisted because knowing principle and practicing principle are not the same thing. You can know that we're supposed to love one another, but there's a difference between knowing it and practicing it. It's very difficult to practice that in every situation, right? You you might know that that it's a, that that you don't have to worry about your bills being paid if you if you do the right magical operation. You may know that that's true. You may even know the right spells to use, but to be able to practice that. It's different. You may know that going to the gym every day makes you have a really nice body, but you may not want to do it, and you just want the body. You just want to be able to play the piano. You just want to be able to be a magnificent harpist, but you don't want to practice, right? That's, that's understandable. It's hard. You know, it's, it's, it's not even that it's hard. It's just, it, it, it's like, ugh. You don't want to do it. It's just, it's, yeah, it's just, it just, it's, a, it's part of the human condition that we don't want to do what it takes to solve our problems. Okay, so remember that I'm going to give you some principles today, and knowing that filing them away for later use is fine. But if you, if you are able to practice these principles, I guarantee you they will work. But you have to do them. You know, if, if, um, if, if uh, Hitler goes into the gym and works his body out, he'll grow muscles. If Mother Teresa goes into the gym and works her body out, she'll grow muscles. It doesn't, the, the universal principles don't have any judgment on who you are, or what you've done, and whether you're a good enough person. You know, mm -hmm. oxygen doesn't care what you've done and where you've been. If you breathe deeply, you will live. It's just the way. The, 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 how do you know if someone's dead or alive? Well, if they're not breathing, they can't live for very long. You can go without water for a while. You can go without food for a while. You can go without human contact for a while. You can go without your favorite music for a while. There's a lot of things you can do, but you can't breathe for more than a you know, depending on how advanced of a yogi you are or whatever, you can't go for more than a minute maybe or two or three and then you're done, right? So, so this is what we're talking about, that, there's, that there, are, there is a power available to everybody who wants to use it. And I always feel sorry for people who are in, don't know, understand what witchcraft is. I feel bad for them. You know, I feel bad. And it's, again, I don't have any problem with any religion. You can, be, you can be Christian. You can be Muslim. You can be whatever. I always just feel bad for them. Because they're, they're, it's just like, I don't understand why anybody would want to be involved in anything that, that teaches them that they're miserable sinners and that they're going to hell. And that they can't, that they can't access a technology that, that solves their problem. I, don't, I, just, I feel bad. And, it, you know... All the stuff that all this, all the Hollywood movies about witches and the books that were written about it, that make witches out to be evil, horrible people—they're never written by the witches. No. Witches don't say that. You know, it's just—it's it's, it's almost like this vast conspiracy to keep people down so that they don't access the power to do what they want to do. Because it's like there's there's these few chosen people in the world. It seems like up until recently, who've had access to this technology that, and everybody else was kept in the dark. But now it's different. It's available to everybody, but whether we use it or not is up to us. So the laws of polarity. So if you think about it, let's look at the, um, the, the, the plus side of the battery first, the God part. If you are in touch with the God, if you are in touch with the masculine part, if you're in touch, again, this is not dealing with 
human beings, and we're talking about pure principle. Everybody's got, you got to have both. As a human being, if you're going to be an effective magician, you've got to have equal amount of both in your magic, or it won't work. So it's, it's, so it's electromagnetic. <clears throat> so we're talking about the electrical side of it. We're talking about the plus side of it. The electrical side is the God side. It's the, po- it's the positive side. If in your consciousness as a magician, as a witch, as a, as, a, as a practitioner of the occult sciences, if you can develop a strong will to make things happen, that is half the battle right there. That is the fire element. So, if you anybody remember in 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 the in the alchemical order of creation, fire is the element number one. Okay, so fire is element number one. It doesn't mean it's more important. It just means it comes in first in order. Okay, so but what is before fire? Thought, the word. Okay, what's but is that not is there not a will to have the thought? Okay, what comes before any thought, any will, any, anything? Design. There's nothing. There's nothing. And I don't mean nothing meaning no thing. I'm talking about the holy zero. It's like, it's the, it's the, it's the primal womb. It's the primal nothingness. It's the primal... Great cosmic void? Yes. The great cosmic void. It's that which, when you start naming it, it's not that anymore. <laughs> right? Okay. So, but out of this comes, out of this, out of this, it's, you calling it a womb is almost too much. You know, you can't call it. Out of, out of nothing, we're just going to call it nothing, comes fire, which is will. The, 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 immediately, simultaneously, water is created because fire fire has to have its opposite in order to be creative water if 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 fire is will what is water desire desire i think so if you are willful and you have no desire you're you're just a son of a bitch <laughs> you're just it's cold right but if, so you have to have you have to not only be able to broadcast your will, but you have to be able to be magnetic. This, the negative side of the pole, the, the 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 goddess, you have to be magnetic to pull it unto you. And I think that that's really um, if we go backwards through the order of creation, if we focus more on our desire. The will tends to happen of its own accord. Because if your desire is strong enough, you're just, you, you, most of us will act on it. That's interesting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that where people get messed up is that they think about in terms, and I, and I don't disagree that you have got to do things to strengthen your will. Absolutely. But in, in uh, balance with that, you have got to do things to strengthen your d- ability to desire. And one of the things that has happened, especially in this culture, because most of us were raised in a religion, and I won't name names of religions right now, there has got to be at least one that anybody has been raised in this room that says that it's not holy to desire. It's not holy to want. And I think that there's a conspiracy. And I, again, I don't even mean a conspiracy that's well thought out. I think it's like a, I think it's a, it's a, it's a conspiracy of the, of the separated self. It's a diseased part of our, of our mass thinking that is involved in this, these kinds of religions that teaches people at a very young age that it's not holy to desire. Well, misery loves company, which is kind of one of the points that you had made earlier. And therefore, it reflects on this. If you're desiring, you're not miserable and you're not with the rest of us. And therefore, you must be a freak if you're desiring to have all these great things. There's true. That, that I agree with that. But I'm saying that at a very young age, a lot of us are taught it's not okay to want. It's not okay. Who are you to want you're this? You're not worthy enough to receive. There's, there's the you're, the you're not worthy enough to receive is, is I think, a, a definite manifestation of that. Well, I think we're also taught that to want to desire things is to be greedy. Right. And greedy is bad. Right. There's other people starving. How dare you have all that? But let's but let's let's look at this now. I want to I'm going to continue on this, and then we'll t- discuss it. There's a difference between building this battery up 
in order for it to be in order for you to have everything that you want at the exclusion of everybody else and real and, and it's a very and and, and 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 building that battery like that is very uh, lacking in any good any, any real power because there is a force of nature that is this battery it, that is the will to grow that is the will to thrive that is the will to heal when you're cut when you cut yourself that is the will to heal that is the will to evolve that species evolve the whole idea of survival of the fittest it's the will to survive so it's it's natural this battery this this desire and will is natural it is part of nature and there is a field of what what many people call divine will or or I want to just I might even call it the the goddess just because that recognizes that it means nature there's a there's a field in, in that uh, the force of of the star wars if you will there is a field that his that if you consider it as a it's a circle that whose whose center is whose center is everywhere and whose circumference is nowhere it's a it's a it's an infinite field of of possibility and it's an infinite field of will and desire that is that is that is nature and what what a what a real powerful witch needs to do is to put herself and or himself as the center of this universal will. And the first thing that happens when we, when we do that is we think, oh well, wait a minute, that is egotistical, and that is uh, that is that is greedy, mm -hmm. and that is egotistical. But what did I say? Its center is everywhere, and its circumference is nowhere. That means that there's an infinite amount of centers available how big and how strong you want to build that battery that is that is aligned with and connected to the universal field is up to you and it's up to anybody that wants to access it and this is what what um, and I when I quote Crowley I don't want anybody to think that we are a, a Thelemic religion and because it, we're not and it, not that, that it would be bad because I, I love Thelema and I love the Thelemites and I love everybody in the OT that I know but we're not that so don't misunderstand that I'm not trying to it's just Crowley is a really good author in certain things yeah. he's a very good source when he talks about Love is the law, love under will. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will. That is somebody who is setting themselves in the center of the universe as the center of the universe and strengthening their will. But they're aligning their, themselves with the will of the universe. And, and, and there's another line in, in the book of the law that he writes, and that is that every man and every woman is a star. And what that means is, have you noticed that some stars are little, and some stars are big, and some stars shine brightly, and some stars not so much, right? There are people, every, every man and every woman is a star, but there's a lot of people who don't want to put themselves in the center of the universe, that do not want to be the center of the universe because of whatever reason. Either they're too lazy, or they think it's, they're not worthy, or whatever it is. What tends to happen to those people? They tend to go along. They tend to go along with the electromagnetic magnetic field of the strong stars around them. Whether or not that person is intending on manipulating them or not. Because if you are a strong-willed person, and when I say strong-willed, I mean divine will, meaning that you have a balance of desire and will, a, a balance of magnetic and electrical power within you. That means that you have honed your craft quite well. You tend to be dynamic, and you tend to draw things unto you which you need and that you want for your work in this world, and you tend to be able to cause other people or things or events around you to, uh, to to be that which is in accordance to your will. Now, if this happens, if this happens 
while you are connected to the universal will, it's very, very powerful. But when we start trying to think, oh, this is my power, what does it say in the landmarks? The power is not yours, it is the power that is passed through you, it's the power of the Father, right? So when it's our when we when we mistake this power as being ours alone and that we're not part of a uh, 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 we're not part of the universe. We're not part of this universal field of of, of, of will. Then our our power diminishes. But as long as we're plugged into that, that means that we are movers and shakers, and that we draw very powerfully draw things unto us, and that we very powerfully effect change to the to the circumstances around us because our we will and we and we mag, and we are magnetic and we are willful we 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 cause change to happen and we draw unto us that which is ours now the the point that people get caught up with is oh okay well this is all fine and good if everybody starts doing this then there's going to be chaos in the universe because what happens when my will butts up against your will well yeah but wait a minute if we're talking about your will as being a star in the company of stars, if we're talking about your will as being connected to the will, the great will, the, 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 the great field that we were discussing earlier, or nature, as it's more easy for me to understand it, then there's no way that you would ever be interested in doing anything that would go up against any other person's will because that's not part of nature. There's a, ba- there's a dynamic balance in nature that you cannot upset. If you try to upset it, you will be corrected. <laughs> right? And that's why when people say, that's when we get things like the threefold law, that which you put out will come back to you times three. It's, it's like a child's understanding of a very advanced concept, which is that there is only one field. There's only one mind. And everybody's got the center of it. But there's a place at which we are all one, and we are all cells in a larger organism, and it's working very harmonically. And that if one cell tries to have its own universe apart from this other cell, it's a malignancy, and it will be taken care of by the immune system of the greater whole. Isn't that right? Isn't that what cancer is? Is when a cell decides to create its own universe, mm-hmm. right? So even if the body of a human being dies, it's nature's way of getting rid of the cancer. Does that make sense? If the immune system of that individual is not strong enough to get rid of the cancer, the immune system of the species is strong enough to get rid of the cancer, right? And if the species starts to go against nature, the immune system of nature is strong enough to get rid of the species. Now, that can be scary or it can be very empowering, depending on how you look at it. Because we are at the precipice, our species right now, of being either extinct or super species. We can go one way or the other. And the choice is really ours. Yes, collectively, but individually. Because what did I say? If you're battery is strong enough, you can't help but influence everybody around you. It's just the way it works. It's not that you're being manipulative. It's not. If you start being manipulative, your power is drained. Because remember, then you're, then you're separating yourself. But if you're working on your desires and your will, if you're, if you're strengthening those two poles of your battery, you must draw things unto you which are in accordance with your desires, and you must influence everybody around you, or they will have to run away because they can't handle your energy. They'll either get on board or they'll run away. Or if you're a bunch of very powerful people that, that, that are very powerful, then you're going to automatically be drawn to one another, and then you have quite an amazing experience. And that's when you get into an amazing group magic and things like that, right? And even, um, so when, when, so like, look at, there's a, um, so the, the concept of magic for personal gain comes up all the time. I get this, it's just such bullshit. It's like, oh no, you're not supposed to use the magic, and in Crowley, Crowley, uh, I'm sorry, bless his heart, but he had his hand in this too, where he said, you know, the, the, the great work 
and, it, and I understand where he's coming from, but people have misunderstood, misinterpreted his writings, where he said, just like they've misinterpreted Jesus's and Eli's and everybody's, right? Where he, he, I'm paraphrasing, but he has stated that any magical work other than the great work is black magic. That means anything that, that, is, that is for personal gain is where people interpret that. No. That means if you are if you are separating yourself from the field and trying to have your own battery separate from the universal battery, that is what he's calling black magic, meaning that it's just not very powerful. It's just not very powerful. And um, and it's malignant. But if you are plugged into your desires, you didn't put them there. You personally didn't put them there. Your true desires are are you plugging into the universal field? You want to play the piano? You better do it. You really, really want to? You better do it. The problem is not that we don't, you know, the, the, it's not, the, the problem is not that, that, that uh, we don't have desires. The problem is that we shut them down every time. We don't desire enough. What do you really want to do? I mean, I remember asking somebody this before that was so stuck, and it was like, I, it was like I was. It was like I was piercing their hand with a hot poker, asking them what they wanted, and they did not want to think about that. They wanted to hang so desperately onto the fact that their life wasn't working, right? They wanted their angst. Yeah, they wanted it. They were so addicted to this, you know. You, and and you know, you can't change people. So you, you you can't. You let them be. But those of us in here that are ready for this next step, because many of us are in tune with our desires, but I guarantee you, none of us are in tune enough with what, what we desire. None of us are following our desire. What, what Joseph Campbell always said, follow your bliss. The problem is that people don't know what it is because they haven't done their homework. That's why we practice. What do you want? What do you want? Do you, what do you want? What do you love? And that's hard. But what do you love? You, I mean, you love music? You love, I mean, I don't care. You love electronics? If life is just sailing on a ship, I mean, where do you want to go? Do you just want to sail on the black and follow the freaking moon and go nowhere? Or do you want to follow over here to the island? Do you want to go over there? I mean, what right. do you want? Why are you here? What the hell are you doing? Right. And, and, and can you get to the point where it's burning, where it's burning hot desire inside of you? You know, because that, that burning hot desire is the coalition of, of God and goddess. It is the great right. Because that burning desire, it needs to be. It needs to come together. It has got to. It has got to. What is that? Remember that, that, that uh, charge of the goddess? Um, you'll find me when you reach the end of desire. The goddess is calling you forth. Meaning that she wants you to come to her. The only way to her is to go through desire. The yeah, the yeah, the end of desire is when you reach it, right? But you know what I found? That 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 every, the end of every desire is the beginning of a new one. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, I, I I you know, in teaching, in teaching, especially in teaching art and teaching music, um, I consider music and art. I, mean, I don't teach visual arts, but in teaching music, people, I notice that especially students that are very committed to it, and then they and and I've and I've I've had the 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 great fortune to, to work with students for 10 years. And that's a very interesting thing when you can have, have a, the same student over 10 years and they just get so frustrated after 10 years of like, I'm not, I, I'm never going to make this. If only I could blah, 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 blah. And I'll say, do you know, I remember about five years ago when if you knew that you would be where you are as a musician today, you would have been thrilled. But as soon as you're there, you don't, that's not enough anymore. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Otherwise, if you think you're good enough, you become complacent and you stop growing and you're not, that, you're not a good artist, you're not a good musician. How many times have you seen somebody really make it in the music industry and stop caring about their music? You know, and, and, and then everybody says, oh, they sold out. Well, it's not that they sold out, it's that they stopped Desiring. They became content. Yeah, they stopped desiring. Right, exactly. So, my point with all of this is that not only are your desires holy, they're essential. 
they're essential. You're just like, it's not our right to follow our desires, but as, as, as students of the craft, it's our responsibility to investigate what we want. It's our, it's, our, it's our responsibility, especially if you're teaching this stuff. If you're teaching this stuff, how are you ever going to be fired up enough about magic if you aren't having success after success after success to where people wanted to have what you have? That's the whole idea about, about being a teacher is not throwing principle at people. And, and, and throwing dogma at them and throwing assignments at them and hoping that, you know, that they follow. They, they, they quit. The only, the only teachers that are successful in those sorts of classrooms are the ones where it's state-sponsored and kids have to be there. Right? But we don't have state-sponsored witch school. The only, the only students you're going to have are the ones that want to be here. And if you aren't, if you don't have something they want, they're going to look elsewhere. And, so, and well, they should. Well, they should. So it's our responsibility as teachers, and whether you're a formal teacher of, of people in, in the craft or whether you're just a teacher of life, we teach by example, right? It's, I think, if we are at any level of advancement in our evolution, it's our responsibility to take this stuff more seriously. And what I find is that there's a lot of people in the craft, and I'm not talking about anybody in this room, but I know people in the craft, I know a lot of people, and I know people that have been involved in the craft as long or longer as I, and some of them are still thrilled with it, and some of them sold out because they did like the musicians, and they got complacent, and they don't... You know, they're not thrilled with it anymore. If you're not thrilled with it anymore, you should give up and do something else. You know? Follow your bliss. Follow your bliss. But, but what happens is there's a conceit. Is what, what, what it, After you've... The first part of, of getting to find your, your desire is overcoming guilt for having desire. Okay, but you get to a, per, a certain point where you, it's like you found the mother load and you can have whatever you want, whenever you want it, and it's success after success after success. It's like going into Vegas and you know that no matter what fucking machine you go on, it, you're going to hit the jackpot. And it happens, right? What happens then is, and it's very tempting, is you do what we were talking about earlier, is you think, I'm doing this. It's me personally. It's my battery, and I'm more important than everybody. And have we ever seen anybody do that? Have we ever seen anybody in the craft do that? Think, get real. I've done it, and luckily enough, my teachers in spirit have been so kind and smacked me down before I got out of control. Because I realize, and, and everybody hopefully realizes that the second you think that it's you and not the universe, that it stops. The, the magic stops. You have no, you're not plugged in. It's like taking the lamp and, and, and wondering why it's not plugged in. Or why it's not working. Because you didn't plug it into the socket. And then what happens to these people is they've got this lamp that doesn't bring light. But they tell everybody that it's light. That it's lit. And they've convinced themselves that it's lit. And they fascinate everybody with stories about how it's lit. Right? Remember the, the story of the emperor's new clothes? And everybody wants to believe them because they think they're the, the powerful one. They've convinced themselves that they're, they're going to get what they want from this person. And eventually, hopefully, somebody says, there's no fucking light out of that lamp. <laughs> and then everybody else finally says, you're right, there's no light. And the best thing you can do is tell the truth in situations like that. Because you're not serving yourself, you're not serving that teacher, and you're not serving the other students, whether it's in the craft or anything, right? So then what you do if you notice that that's happened to you is you say, oh, that's right, I forgot. That's the idea of, that's the, that's the um, if you think about Christianity from a Gnostic perspective rather than a fundamentalist perspective, that's the esoteric understanding of the word redemption. Redeem the light. You plug the lamp back in. It's not that you were an evil sinner and that you were forgiven by some external source. It's that you remembered that you had to plug it into the wall. Oh, I, forgot. I forgot about the socket. Yes, it is. And then you plug it in and all is forgiven. It's on. Like I said, the, the universe doesn't care if you're Adolf Hitler. If you remember to inhale, you will live. You will live, right? Oh, I forgot. I was supposed to breathe. 
Yeah, and then you and then you did, and then all is well with the world. All is right with the world. And once that happens, you can't help but be uh, a force for healing in the world because you are part of the field again. You are part of the field, and you are the center of your universe again, and you are part of the field of, of, of the universe that wh- whose center is everywhere and whose circumference is nowhere. Yes. How wrong is that? Because I often say I'm the center of my own universe. And, and I mean that maybe somewhat of a sarcastic thing, but I absolutely... Maybe the sarcasm Maybe the sarcasm is just your stepping stone to getting to the point where you need to be, to know that you are the center. Because I, I, I feel that. I really think that. And I think you're the center of your universe. And I think everybody here is the center right. of their own universe. Right. But I think... Facetiously is a joking thing, but I, I absolutely mean it. The way you can tell how well you know this and how well it, you built this into your consciousness is by being excruciatingly honest with yourself at how satisfied you are with, with, with where, your ice, where your world is. Mm-hmm. You know? Right? And not whether you have everything you want to but whether you're satisfied with where it's going. Sure. Because no, you're not going to have every. Like I said, once you have everything you want, if you're doing it right, you're going to want other things. So you're right? going to have everything you want. No. And, and, and when I'm talking about having everything, this is a very important point. If you are involved in this stuff, mostly everything that you want has to do with things that you want to do, not with things that you want to have. Yeah, things that you want to be. Yeah. Things, I think it's be number, is number one, do is number two, and have is number three. Because you have to be able to have what you need in order to accomplish what you want to do in order to be who you need to be. Yeah. Right, so you, but all of your all of your um, all of your physical possessions are tools in order to support the do, and the doing is su- to support the being. Right, but that will all happen organically as a result of you being clear on what you want. So if you got to be honest with it, if what you want is a Mercedes, you can't just say, "Yeah, but that's the," you know, "But what do I want to do? That's what I want to be." No, get the Mercedes first. If that's where it is right now, get the Mercedes first. I got that. I got that clearly. Get the Mercedes because I, I kept saying, ah, "I know, I know, I know, I want the Mercedes, but I shouldn't have the Mercedes." And I did the spell on the Mercedes, and then I, I sh- you know, and the Mercedes kept wanting to come, and I kept saying, "No, I shouldn't have the Mercedes." And finally, I finally got it. Oh yeah, I wanted the Mercedes. Maybe I should have the Mercedes. Well, the Mercedes was not the end. The Mercedes was just a thing for me to learn that this stuff works on a different scale. That's all. That's all. The money was a thing for me to know that this stuff works on a different scale. The money, the Mercedes, the house, all of that stuff, not important. Not important. But was an important part. Okay. However, if you're worried about your bills, if you're wonder, wonder, if you're living from paycheck to paycheck, if you're knee deep in debt, then those things are important desires for you to work on, right? Those are important to handle. That's called a short-term goal to get to your other goals. So, so there's no excuse for you to be in poverty either just because you think, oh, well, it's not important. No, because listen to this. Because of the fact that we can have whatever we want financially, who is better, who is better equipped to help the environment? Somebody... Hello. That's equipped their home with solar. Who doesn't? Who makes their own energy? Thank you very much. And who was able to move their 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 place of employment exactly one mile from their home, so that mm-hmm. their that, that their Mercedes only is eight or nine thousand miles per year. And who's able to afford to everything that I cannot reduce? I'm able to offset with carbon credits. Is that a more responsible person or is it the person who's got a clunker who has to drive far to work because they can only afford to live in bumfuck and, mm-hmm. and the only good job is way out there and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying that, it's, that, that rich people are better than poor people. I'm saying that you got to get your head straight about this stuff. If you want money, there's, it's because there's good things you can do with money. So the desire for money is not pro- is not problematic. The desire money for, is, for money is holy as long as you are connected to the infinite universal field of power, 
a battery, the battery we're talking about, the God and goddess. That's what it is. It's the God and goddess. The goddess and goddess, the God and goddess are, are putting the desire for a lot of money in you. It's so that you get a lot of money. Not so that you, not for you personally, so that you can do good things in the world. Who is doing more for the world? The Gates Foundation or the person on welfare? And again, I'm not saying that the person on welfare is bad and the Gates Foundation is good. I'm just saying that we have this really screwed up message in our minds about rich people are bad and poor people are, are, this, are the salvation. You know, The meek shall inherit the earth does not mean that poor people are going to one day just take it over because everybody else dies. The meek shall inherit the earth means that meek means I'm humble enough to know that of myself I can do nothing. But if I, but if I am one with the power of the god and goddess, and I can do, and I allow their will to work through me, through my desire body, through my desires, that's meekness. That's humility. You're, you fall. You know, isn't that funny? We think it's arrogant to follow our desires. It's arrogant not to follow our desires because we didn't put them there. It's humility to follow our desires to get what we want in life. That's humble. That's humble. As long as we don't think that the power came from us. Well, that's not humble anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's when that power goes away. Yeah. It, it's, it, it, it changes on you. Yeah. It's yeah. like that. It's just like the bulb goes out. But it can always get plugged back in. I've had moments of that, though, where I get a little cocky. You certainly am. Bam! You're supposed to. You're supposed to so you learn the lesson. Mm-hmm. I, I, my lamp has gone out. It was a strobe light for a long time. <laughs> you know? So, but, but that's the power of forgiveness. You know, the power of forgiveness, the, the universe is so forgiving that you can always plug your lamp back in. Now, when we, when we see somebody who's not acting in integrity, what we do, as, as, as humans that are not perfect yet, is we say they should never plug their lamp back in. That should <laughs> never, because I don't like them. I don't like what they did to me. They, right? I, I had that the other day. I had that the other day. This, this person, by my standards, is... One of the worst people I have ever encountered in my life. And it took me five years to see it. And it was just like... My whole understanding of spiritual principle, I couldn't care less. All I wanted to do was hate her. <laughs> you know? Have you ever been there? Have you ever? It's just like, okay, it's not yeah. that you're bad, it's that you're human. None of us are perfect. You know, but what you get to do is start over in any moment. Any moment you get to plug the light back in. You get to forgive that person. You're not, it's not, the karma is not, is not um, some scoreboard of your past. Karma actually releases you from your past. Karma is cause and effect. And cause is when you've learned your lesson, you plug the light back in, the the light goes on and you move on and it's over and it's over. That's it. So there is nothing that you've done in your history and there's nothing that anybody else has done in their history that, that damns them to hell. But we want to damn each other to hell just because we don't like each other. You know, there's certain, there's certain people that it's just like, you know, they just bug me. You know, and that's just, that's just normal. And it's just my lesson. And that's everybody. We is our lesson. We have got to learn that it's okay to go through that. But that doesn't mean that it's okay to stay on that. Because that, that is just a waste of time. Does it make sense? Okay, now, questions, comments? It's also a waste of energy, too. Well, yeah, because your lamp is gone. I mean, you're, you're wasting all this time. Any time that we're not with our light on, it's not that we're bad. It's just we've wasted another minute. We've wasted another day. We've wasted another year. We've wasted, wasted a lifetime. When you, when, you know, the, the, best, the best teacher in this world is death. Because when someone dies, has anybody ever had somebody important to them die? Okay, when you've had a really close friend die, that's why the gay community in the in the eighties got real enlightened. Because I've never, I don't remember any community other than somebody that, that has been part of a like a natural disaster that has for for prolonged periods of time kept losing their friends. Their, their friends were just dying, right? So, but when you, when you lose somebody, you don't, there's nothing in the world that is more final. And theoretically and metaphysically, and even in our hearts, we know that they're not gone. But in this time, space, continuum, that's over. That body's gone. And it's not, and you know what we do? We blame death. 
We say, oh, death took them from us. No. What happened was, the reason why you're so upset is not only that they're gone, is that you wasted the whole time that they were alive by not having a relationship with them. All the time that we waste day in and day out with people, and then when, we di- when they die, we regret it. And instead of recognizing the fact that this is a lesson that we need to learn to love people more, to make, it, to make our relationships more meaningful, uh, we, we blame death. Because that, what, what do we do? That's the, it's the way the mind works. When we feel guilty, we project. When we feel guilty, we project. And when you project, you, you perceive yourself to live in a hostile universe. That's the way it is. That's just how this metaphysics 101A. We, 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 we don't want to see the truth about ourselves. We rationalize away our weaknesses and we fail to recognize our strengths. And when we do that, in order to, in order to avoid the, the sting of recognizing our own weaknesses, we say, I didn't do it, they did. And we project it and we project it. And what is happening is the mind is in charge of our experience. Because the, 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 the physical world is a reflection of our consciousness. And if our consciousness is, con- is all about projecting that which, w- which we don't want to see about ourselves, then that which we don't want to see about ourselves keeps reflecting itself back at us. And the, th- the, the, the thoughts that we are wanting to get rid of usually are a preponderance of attack thoughts. So we live in a, in a hostile universe because we are projecting back to ourselves that which is our own attack thoughts. So we are constantly on guard, being attacked. And we're our worst enemy. We are our only enemy. There is no other enemy but ourselves. Now, there is a there's an old occult banishing that is, I think, very interesting. It says, it says by. In the name that is above every other name, I banish from this place all seeds of evil and cast, it, cast them into the outer darkness where they shall trouble, trouble not the seekers of truth. Now, if you think about that from an unenlightened point of view, that's saying, oh my God, then there's this outer darkness where there's this, all these seeds of, that, that it might come back and get me. Wait a minute. What's the outer darkness? The outer darkness is the understanding that there is nothing that is not light. So all seeds of evil are being cast into their perspective of being not real. So when you cast out as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a witch, when you are exercising your space, and I hope you're doing something like it every day in your magical practice, where you're banishing the, the seeds of evil, it's not that you're saying, oh my God, everybody's out to attack me and I'm banishing the evil, you know, so I can get through the day. No, you're banishing from your own mind all of your own attack thoughts so that you'll stop projecting them onto the field of your universe and stop living in a hostile world, which didn't exist in the first place. Right? Because we live in a mass hallucination. And if your hallucination and my hallucination are in agreement, then we get really crazy together. But what did we say earlier? If you have a battery that's very strong and filled and, and, and in tune with the great cosmic field, the God and the goddess, you are more powerful than those people. By definition, you're more powerful. You have more access to power. It's not you personally are power, but you have more access to power. People are, the weak-minded people will either run away or they'll go along with you. They have no choice. The weak-minded people have no choice. Hopefully the ones that go along with you want what you want, and they eventually become strong-minded people, and you've helped people in that cable tow, right? Want what you want. Yeah. That's the whole idea. That's, that's how, that's the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, is, is you don't go out and, and, and tell people that they should stop drinking. You live a life that everybody wants what you want, and an alcoholic that sees what you want, that recognizing their not, life isn't working, they say, well, I want to do it the way you're doing it. And they say, okay, well, then come with me, and I'll show you how I did it. That's why they say in Alcoholics Anonymous that it's a program of attraction, not... Um, what is it? Attraction, not solicitation. I'm not a member of the program, but that's why it works so well. That's why it works so well. Be there, you're there. If you don't want to be there, you're not. But that's what we do too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You can put out a flyer to let people know where your class is. I mean, you got. I mean, you can't. You can't be stupid. But but it's not that you're. It's not that you're out recruiting people in the sense that you're trying to drag people in there to so that so they can be a member of some cult. It's just that you become the person that people that you 
want to be around want to be around you and they want to find out how you got there and you can help them do that and teach them what you know and then they can find themselves and they can teach them what they know and on it goes and it's a beautiful thing and that's how that's how Eli envisioned the perfection of the world is that it's it's Johnny Appleseed right and that's that's his vision of it and it's not that that we are the one true way to perfection it's just a cool way of looking at things I think and I always thought that, that the way the craft, the, the, the craft that, as we practice it, is like multi-level marketing for for spirituality, <laughs> you know, because it's not one big congregation; it's a bunch of little ones. You got a, you got a downline, but you know. <laughs> anything? Anybody else have anything to say, share, ask? The, 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 the feeling I, I got was, I know that sense of when you get unplugged. Yes. When you when you have gotten cocky about, I've got my in my case Corvette. Okay, yes. Okay, I've got my Corvette, and you stop desiring. Right. And it does things do sort of fall to the floor. They do. But something I think it's in the daily practice gets me back to going. Oh, I need to get back to my meditation. Right. And my focus, and I can plug back in. Hey. And I'm feeling it more in the solar plexus because it's certain points in work. Yeah. You know, there's a very solar plexus sure. event. Sure. Solar plexus is great. Yeah, and it, I, I feel that. I mean, I know when I know when I'm really off because it's, I get that. You know, you have a hole in your tummy. Yes. <laughs> feeling. Right. Yeah, and it's like okay. Well, like we were talking about earlier, is that um, is uh, who wants to know everything. Who wants to be in charge of all of it? Nobody. That's why it's great that all you're responsible for is your desires. And then you can have other people that like the other stuff to do the stuff. You know what I mean? There's people that love to make coffee. They can make it. I'll, I'll drink it. There's people that love, you know, there's people that love wiring. That's great. They can come over. I will pay them and they can do my electricity. You know, I don't like any of that stuff. There's people that love numbers. Great. You can do my taxes. I'm not doing them. You know, there's, 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 there's room for everything. I think it's, it's like a, it's, it's, it's an ecosystem. We all, we, we're, it's an ecosystem. Yes. I will comment on the comment that you made yes. about, um, death being a great teacher because, um, Today, 14 years ago, two of my friends passed away. Uh, They're both very young people, mm. under the age of 23. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was an accident. And, um, you know, they were a great pair of people, but at the time, um, it was three weeks after a friend of mine had passed away down in Mexico. And a week after her passing, I gave my two week notice at my job. I was 19 at the time. And then I, uh, my two weeks notice ended. And I came home to a big celebration at a friend's house for something unrelated, only to find out that these two friends of mine had passed away mm, that morning. I'm sorry. And so it was very strange, but it ended up being such a life lesson for me that I, I became my mantra became, well, it's all about life and love. Mm -hmm. I love to live, and I live to love. And if I don't have those two four little words, you know, going on, right. I got nothing. Right. And you know, I. It, it, I mean, I became, that was when I became a vegetarian. It was, you know, just a total life-altering time period. Right. And all the subsequent losses that happened after that, and they were numerous, yeah. added on to the fact that, you know, with each one, even though they were all painful in their own individual way, I knew that, you know, it was inevitability. And as long as I spent my time giving love to the people who were alive around me mm -hmm. and the whole idea of life and love, right. then that's really all that I can do. Right. You know, because I have no guarantees, as we talked about earlier, there's no guarantees of tomorrow. No. I have no idea that I will be alive tomorrow. No. I share any of this with you, so I'm super happy to You know what the good thing about that is? There is no tomorrow. Yeah. It doesn't exist. Exactly. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, such a, it's such a stupid fable. And the idea that you're putting everything off for a, an existence beyond yeah. this existence. I know. It's ridiculous. It's, it's, and it's so painful to see. It's that, you know... I, I can't bank on ten. No. You know, because this is, you know, coming into But what you can knowledge. but what you can bank on in regards to an afterlife is that if you are building your own spiritual will, you will have experiences that guarantee to you that there is more than your body. It you can't you there, you get to a point in this occultism and this spiritual life and this craft where you, it's so 
obvious yeah. that there are so many planes of existence that are not this and that are just as important as this and that it, it, it really helps to not be afraid very much so because uh, you know the idea of, 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 of death is, is very scary to a lot of people and that's one of the most liberating things is to stop being afraid of death because there is no death there is no death you know what death is is death to me anyway is the absence of taking advantage of this moment that's what death is not the body not when somebody dies the the the, de- the death to me is is the regret of what i didn't have with them while they were while they were in this body you know everybody i know that's died of an illness it, it's been i've been so happy for them that they've died and they're not suffering the sadness and the regret on my part usually has to do with the, a missing them yes but being well and not be, make, making not making use of the time that I had. Not yeah. making yeah. those promises. We go here, we go there. We do this together. Was the last thing I said, catch you later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, but too though, when you can release that fear, I feel, I, I feel, and, and, I, and I felt then when I started learning this lesson was that as soon as I was able to release the fear that yeah, I'm going to die. Everyone around me is going to die. Um, I actually felt like I could start living my life. Yeah. I no, I agree. I understand. Of, oh I understand that. You know, my well, if you don't do it, you really regret not doing it when they die. That's right. So who says it's wrong? No, it's not wrong. No. That's why, you know, that's why Samhain is such an important ceremony. Is because it's... Not only is it important for us to, to uh, look at our mortality and the mortality of our loved ones, but then it's a time for us to realize that they're, that they're still there. <laughs> <laughs> consciously working mm-hmm. or I'm not plugging into the power that I know exists right. and I'm, I'm letting my hubris say that I'm the power Yes. and then I get drained to the floor and I'm going, oh, I'm on the floor ah, let's regroup yeah. time to plug back in I've got a hold well that's why when, when people that have a religious experiences and they fall to their knees and they, they feel like they've been saved it's not so much that the thing that they're it's the reason why they, they are so happy is because they've gotten rid of the moment for the in a moment they've gotten rid of the idea that that they're in charge that there's something bigger than them but you know there's a more sophisticated way of looking at that rather than oh Jesus will save me one day for me it's more sophisticated to say no we're, there's a there's a, there's an actual science to this and that you can plug into it and that you're supposed to plug into it and that when you do you can have an amazing life and you can help other people have an, people to have an amazing life as well and you can actually help to heal the ills of the earth that, that, we're, that we're having and we need more people doing this stuff we don't need less people doing it we need more people and it's not necessarily numbers of people but we need, pe- we need some people to get really really good at this because it doesn't take that many people but it takes some people that are very powerful Meaning that they're very plugged in, that their light bulb is, is, is many watts, in order to in order to influence enough enough of people around them, because the influence happens spontaneously. You're not willing people. You're not mind. It's not mind control. You, the, the, you will be influential whether you like it or not, and the influence doesn't come from you. It comes through you. Through you, not through you. Yeah. Anything else? It's probably a lot more. Yeah. Well, um, thank you very much for having me tonight. Let's do a little bit of a meditation as we finish. And just just real briefly, we're just take a couple breaths, relax our body, and uh, all we want to do is take a moment and. Contemplate the idea that there is a power in nature that is infinite. And it's the same power that makes the grass grow. It's the same power that makes the, the planets revolve around a sun. It's the same power that uh, makes um, small baby animals come from embryos. Flowers bloom. And that same kind of will we are connected with. 
We take a moment and we ask ourselves that we're going to take a moment every day and picture that we are in the center of this universal field. And that we are actively pursuing our desires and that we recognize that our desires are holy and that they are a gift to us from this force, this power that we call God and Goddess. And that it, our, it is our responsibility to desire more and desire more completely and to practice will and to say what we mean and mean what we say and to keep our word and to do the things that we say we're going to do each day in order to serve these desires. And that we recognize that the more that we plug into these desires, that these actions will be spontaneous because it's much more easy and fun to take action on things we love. Yes, we are the center of this universe. This universe is a field of energy whose center is everywhere and whose circumference is nowhere. And therefore, it's safe for us to claim our own center of the universe right here and right now. Thank you very much, God and Goddess. Together we all say blessed be. And thank you very much.